Hello and welcome to my kitchen. Just in case you're wondering, this is what it looks like. The other day I talked about the Aldi gaming PC as made by Median, and I'm happy to report. Oh, but it's arrived! Ooh, that is significantly heavier than I expected. Whew. Right, we're gonna try and do this in one take as much as possible. Opening this up, looking inside. There's a little Audi logo on here, just in case you're wondering. Um, quick note before I even open this, I haven't touched this box since it arrived this morning. Um, this paper tape they used on the top, just in case you needed a, some foreshadowing of the quality to come, uh, is already peeling off, having been delivered in what was effectively perfect weather. Um, so it's not even like rain got in or something. But we're gonna try getting in through the top. And interestingly, there had been proper tape here. Like what's happened here is they've broken this box open, put the computer in and sealed it back on top by the looks of it. So let's get in here. Um, I've got my Chromebook with me. That's what that is, just in case you're wondering. Um, and that'll be for bits and pieces of research as and when we need it throughout, throughout this experience. So we have, there we go. So in here we get some Aldi, an Aldi Special Buys magazine. I feel like we won't be needing that, I'll be honest. Um, we get some more bubbly stuff. Uh, I'm gonna keep a hold of that because I will almost certainly be returning this PC, I'll be honest. Um, and then you get the PC itself, which isn't another box. Um, it's in this eraser box. I noticed when looking online, like eraser is like the sub-brand. Um, their gaming devices. It was on their laptops as well. All their laptops said eraser on them. Um, as discussed in a previous video, which if you haven't seen, will pop up. Uh, that's that's just just that. Go click on that if you haven't seen that video yet. Um, as discussed in that video, um, these this PC is by Median, which is a German subsidiary of Le Lenovo. Um, so I wouldn't expect this to be terrible. Um, but at 950 pounds, I do expect some corners to have been cut. Um, just in case you weren't aware, as I previously discussed in that video, the specs of this are a one terabyte PCIe SSD. There is an i5-9400 and an RTX 2060. All in all, it's a pretty balanced 1080p system. Um, I can imagine it actually being surprisingly good for 1080p gaming, um, but that's basically it. So I'm gonna grab my iFixit kit, which I forgot to get, and anyway, it was slightly out of shot, but that's fine. Um, for the record, like iFixit doesn't sponsor these videos and neither do any of the brands on my Chromebook. Um, but the reason all the tech people use iFixit kits is because they are genuinely great. Like. I have had mine for sort of six-ish months now, and it has been absolutely amazing for everything I've ever wanted. Um, if I recall the listing properly, uh, this will come with the power cable as expected, but also a wired keyboard and mouse. I am really curious as to what those are like. Um, what's this, is this mouse? Oh, it is the mouse. You know what? That isn't the single worst mouse I've ever seen. It's got this like dimpled plastic. Um, it's not terrible, um, it's a bit light, but I've seen worse mice in my life. It then comes with a guarantee card and a quick start guide. Looking at this image, like we, I discussed again in my video that there weren't any shots of the back of this PC. This is the first look we've had at the back and the unpainted back and the absolutely plain IO shield is a sign of things to come. Um, I just like the original plan had been to do an unboxing and review video first and then to take a look inside after the performance review. Um, but just for the sake of simplicity and not having to like go upstairs, film all of that, then come that back downstairs and film all of this, like basically as to not need to use this kitchen twice, um, the decision has been made um, by me that I'm basically going to film this now Oh God, um, I'm going to film this now where we'll unbox it, take it out of here and then tear it down as well, look inside and then we'll do the review separately. 
just in case you're wondering why I said, oh God, if I pull this out, on the top here, there's a sticker that reads, RGB light included, press Blue Wings logo to change color and effects. Um, so we may plug it in and see what that looks like. Here's the keyboard as also discussed. Um, let's take a look at this keyboard real quick. And then we can take a look at this PC. It said top, but that's actually the back. Um, so we'll take a quick tour of the IO as well in a moment. Here we have the keyboard. Again, it looks like a pretty generic Lenovo keyboard. But what we've done is, like the mouse, they've dimpled it to give it this like slightly gamery feel. It, it feels like a pretty standard membrane keyboard. Again, not great, but not terrible. It's a, a pretty reasonable quality. And considering you're paying £950 for this, you, you'd hope it is. Um, here's the PC itself. I was wondering what that was. There's this like bit that's just randomly sticking out off the back. Uh, so we'll see what that is in a moment. Uh, let's, let's take a look in here. So this is the PC itself. It's kind of expected. It has like a custom case. Like if I turn this all the way around, it says median just here. Um, it's surprisingly small. Like I did expect it to be slightly bigger to be completely honest. Um, they're using by the looks of it, some form of custom motherboard solution. Cause this is the connect, this is for PCIe e cards, like the, the motherboard is screwed into this little bit of a thing. So to get it this short, what they've done is they've had to put in that little plate at the back, which is a bit weird. And to cut costs, they haven't painted this back and they're using a, a bare metal power supply. So I'd wager that that's probably pretty cheap as well. Um, this side is riveted shut. So we'll have to get in through this side. I don't see anything that's like anti tampery um, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. I do want to show you, however, so this is the front. Um, I mean, if you, how do you do this? Um, so if you, oh, here we go. And then there you go. So that is how you pull out the USB, uh, not the USB, the hard drive caddy. If you want a quick swap, a hot swap uh, hard drive. I'm not sure why anyone would ever hot swap a hard drive, but if you ever need to, that is, to be fair, actually a pretty cool feature. Um, here are the wings for that RGB changing, uh, the two USB ports, microphone jack, headphone jack, and then the DVD, CD, read, write, and is that it? Oh, there's even an SD card slot. To be fair, this front panel is quite nicely done. Like, it's all pretty compact. It looks kind of cool. And I do like the blue accent and the power button on top. Um, this case feels like a little over the top in terms of like, gamer case um but that's its biggest crime like otherwise it actually isn't too bad so if we crack this open like this isn't a high, again it's not like the highest quality plastic they've clearly cut some corners but it's not like the single worst thing you could ever use it's for 950 pounds to be completely honest with you guys like i expected a relatively okay pc um, nothing to write home about. And that's definitely what this has been so far. So let's pull this side panel off and it will reveal the insides. Again, just a bit of cost saving. They haven't painted the inside of the side panels, which kind of makes sense because it's a, you're never going to see it. It's the inside. Um, so another bit of cost saving just there. We will, we will find quite a few features like this as well as things like Chinese no name power supplies. Um, so if we look in here, why don't, why don't you come closer? I'll, I'll, let's get a bit closer. Looking in here, it's actually remarkably well laid out. Like there's clearly some level of cable management. Uh, the power supply is clearly very cheap, um, as, as we could guess from the back. Uh, it's by FSP. Um, so we'll do some looking into who they are. Um, there is what looks like a stock-ish cooler behind this CPU, um, but with this little sort of air channel, um, which I, unfortunately is kind of blocking this fan, not by much. Uh, this is an intake by the looks of it. Um, uh, oh, no, it must be an exhaust. Uh, yeah, it's an exhaust fan. Um, and then up here we have the 2060. Uh, I've just noticed when you look at it, it's, it's got a custom sticker on the top of the card. I want to show you. Um, everything is brandless. Um, which in a way doesn't surprise me at all. We kind of discussed this previously, but we'd, with it being technically a Lenovo device, um, everything would probably be, have no branding on it at all. 
Um, but I just want to show you the top of this, this graphics card, because um, it is interesting. Pulling out the graphics card, you can see what I meant by the like weird stickers on the top. Is there saying anything like any branding? They just say don't touch. Um, and if we look at the back, there's this little symbol and it says live to game. Uh, there is a part number, um, where was it? I saw a part number somewhere just here. Um, here it's confirmed that it is indeed an RTX 2060, six gigabytes of DDR6. Um, so I will look up the part number and see if it makes reference to any specific manufacturer. With that taken out though, almost more interestingly, you can get a bit of a better look in here. Um, and we find there's a second M.2 slot, which means you could actually have two M.2 SSDs in here, which is actually quite cool. You can see that there's the Wi-Fi antenna, the sort of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip here. There's even a spare port for a second expansion card, um, as well as of course that DVD drive. You know what, I am positively impressed. And then this, of course, at the bottom here is just the, just the, the caddy. Um, this is significantly better than I was expecting. Um, the SSD is much like the, I think all of this is unbranded by the looks of it. Like nothing here has any kind of brand name at all. Uh, if I just grab a smaller screwdriver bit, if we pull this SSD out, let's see if it says anything on there. There's even, you can see like, this looks like anti-vibration padding. I, I would say it's for thermal, but it's way too thick and there's nothing for it to be touching that is thermally stuff. It just says Fison 1TB. So we'll see, yeah, that's the, that's the only real name on here. Um, so we'll do some digging and figuring out and, and sort of figure out who Fison are. If we do keep going just a little bit more, let's pull out one of these RAM sticks. Um, I think, you know what, for all the expandability in this motherboard, whoopsies, for all the expandability in this case, the one thing that it doesn't have as many RAM slots, it has just two, um, and this is, as it said, 2666. Uh, these are two eight gig sticks made by Samsung, no less. Um, so they'll be of reasonable quality. Nothing visually thrilling, but it is standard RAM. Um, and there are two sticks of it. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's the only real limiting factor looking at this motherboard in terms of future upgradability. I would pull out this motherboard, but it does feel a little bit extreme given the circumstances. So I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. I might just put everything back. I do want to do a quick Google search of all of these different part numbers. So let's move this out of the way. Let's take a seat and let's do some Googling. Before we get Googling, I do want to say that I am genuinely very pleasantly surprised by just the quality. Like I was genuinely expecting something significantly worse. And I just noticed on the back of the, uh, on the back of the power supply, it says ST on it. I'm assuming that's just the stamp of whoever QC'd the device. Um, but that won't stop me from feeling a little bit of pleasure in the fact that that is snappy tech. Okay, so I want to start with the biggest question mark, which is this graphics card, because it does have those really random just don't touch stickers on them. And game to live, I feel like is a tagline, or live to game, sorry, is a tagline I should probably be aware of. So I want to start by just typing in live to game and seeing if anything comes up. There you go. So after a quick search for just live to game, it seems like this is a Zotac 2060 that they've just probably just re-stickered these on. I knew the logo looked somewhat familiar. Um, so it's a Zotac 2060 that is slightly custom uh, with stickers, but is otherwise a pretty reputable 2060. This is a great card for 1080p gaming, as I previously mentioned. So you can't really go wrong with this. If we move on to this SSD, this is a Fison something something one terabyte SSD. So let's, let's look into that. So this Fison controller, this doesn't look like it's an F uh, a Fison SSD. I can't really tell. Um, I might search one of these flash modules and see what they say. So Fison make this, this controller specifically. Um, it's actually used on some quite expensive SSDs. For example, the My Digital SSD BPX Pro can cost up to 500 US dollars. Um, and uses this, this exact controller. Looking at Fison's website, it is a little bit out of date, but it is still a pretty reasonable SSD again. Well, let's, let's see if we can figure out who exactly made these memory modules. Unfortunately, I've searched every single number on this stick, and I can't seem to find a specific manufacturer for the memory modules themselves. 
Maybe once we've got Windows booted on here, we'll be able to figure it out. So we'll, we'll hold out hope for that one. Let's, let's keep digging. So I want to look at some other numbers. So firstly, I want to see if we can figure out the exact version of this motherboard. Luckily, there's a number on here. Um, so let's do a quick search of that. Again, having done some searching, it does unfortunately seem to be at least a little bit custom. Um, again, none of these numbers are bringing anything up. I think what we'll do is I'll keep looking for other parts um, and anything I can't find when we put the SSD and put this PC back together and run the performance test, we'll install things like CPU-Z um, and that should give us some information on what this stuff is. I just can't seem to find any any details on it. Like there aren't any serial, like the one serial number there is is terrible. And other than that, um, there's nothing really on here um, apart from a bit where it says made in China, which is surprising to literally no one. Um, so let, I guess the last thing I want to look for is this motherboard. Uh, nope, that's a lie. Is this power supply? Uh, this has a pretty promising looking sticker on the side that they haven't done anything to by the looks of it. So we should be able to figure out exactly what this is. So this is a 450 watt power supply by a company called FSP Lifestyle. Um, judging by one review they have on German Amazon, it's rated two stars. If we get a quick, quick Google Translate to figure to see if we can figure out why, it just says it died pretty quickly. I'm not surprised. This person claims it took 14 months, um, and it was pretty loud. It's a it's a 450 watt power supply. It looks pretty cheap. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if it is also, again, pretty cheap. Um, obviously, with Median being a German company, like these will be uh, German sourced parts. So the fact it's on German eBay doesn't really surprise me. All in all, quite amazingly, this comes out to a pretty reasonable deal. Like, a, apart from a power supply, which is a little bit dodgy, like, this SSD, like a standard NVMe one terabyte SSD is about 150 pounds. Um, the 9400 that's in here, the i5-9400 sells on Amazon for about 200 pounds. And a Zotac 2060 retails for about 350 pounds. And those three parts alone come to 700 pounds, whereas the PC as a whole is 950. This might actually be pretty hard to beat on value, but you're gonna to have to wait until the next video to find out because first we have to benchmark this PC. Oh, and drink some more tea because of course I have tea, I'm British. What do you expect? So here's my conclusion. Uh, two parts in, I'm almost entirely amazed that our only concern really is the power supply. The 2060 seems reasonable, the SSD seems reasonable. The case is relatively upgradable. There's a second M.2 slot, a, a spare SATA port, and another PCIe thing, if you want to add like, I don't know, something, a Wi-Fi card, I guess, but already has one. I don't even know what you use it for. Maybe another SSD. And that spare SATA port completely ignores this little thing at the front, which is honestly surprisingly cool, as well as this whole front panel, I think is my MVP of the day. Like, I really like the look of this power button and it, this front panel is in just entirely sleek with that hard drive slot, the very well hidden SD card slot and the DVD drive. So I guess the only thing left to do is to hook it all up and see how it actually performs. If you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe. That video will be coming soon. It'll be in the coming days. So subscribe and ring the bell and whatnot to get notified for when that comes out. If you haven't seen part one, you can click like hit here-ish where my hand is roughly or be somewhere around here to go see that. I highly suggest it. And I'll see you guys next time where we might actually have a decent gaming PC for 950 pounds and that's honestly incredible.